built nozzle size on vast majority of FDM 3D printers is 0.4 mm, a good middle ground considering both print speed and the level of detail. Changing the nozzle is pretty easy and it takes just a few minutes, and different nozzle sizes give you all sorts of advantages. But in our survey, just 20% of users answered that they have tried a different nozzle. That's like buying a DSLR camera and never changing the lens. It definitely works, but you're limiting yourself. Smaller nozzles give you increased detail at the cost of print time, and bigger nozzles print fast, but not as detailed. Right? Well, things are not that simple, and we're gonna look at real-life examples to see when to use what nozzle. But first, we have to take a look at the relationship between the nozzle diameter and the layer height. The nozzle diameter directly limits the maximum layer height you can print with. A general rule of thumb is to keep the layer height below 80% of the nozzle diameter. Go higher than that and the layers will stop bonding together well, because the nozzle won't be squishing the current layer against the previous one. Changing the nozzle diameter affects the resolution almost exclusively in the horizontal plane, that is parallel to the print bed. On the other hand, changing the layer height affects the vertical resolution, so it's mostly visible on the sides and angled walls of your models. 3D printing isn't exactly a fast process. Even just a few inches tall print can take hours to complete. So it's quite striking how overlooked printing with large diameter nozzles is. Large nozzles lay down wider perimeters. That means that for the same wall thickness you won't need as many of them. Larger nozzle also allows for greater layer heights. Combining these two effects leads to a dramatic improvement in print speed. However, printing a single perimeter ways will take exactly the same time no matter the nozzle size. The printer still has to do the exact same sequence of moves. But before we get into really fast printing, let's start the examples with a smaller 0.25mm nozzle. As we said before, smaller nozzle increases the resolution in the horizontal plane that is parallel to the print bed, so it's ideal for printing of small text. As you can see, some of the letters on this 3D printed business card are simply too small for the 0.4mm nozzle, which is by the way already visible in Slicer's G-Code preview. But with a 0.25mm nozzle, all letters are printed well and are readable. And just for the record, changing the layer height has absolutely no effect on the print quality in this case. Another use case for a smaller nozzle is printing jewelry. With a smaller nozzle, you'll get clearer thin lines and smaller gaps in top and fill. And what about printing miniatures? To be honest, the standard 0.4mm nozzle already prints them pretty well. Can you tell the difference between these two chests? Where you're gonna see an improvement is if you need to use supports. Supports printed with a smaller nozzle are thinner, easier to remove and leave smaller marks on your print. That's the main reason why the Goblin from the 0.25mm nozzle looks better. And what are the disadvantages of using a smaller nozzle? First of all, the print time will increase compared to the 0.4mm nozzle. The printer has to make more moves to lay the same amount of filament. For example, to make a 2mm thin wall, you have to set 8 perimeters instead of just 5 with a 0.4mm nozzle. There's also increased risk of filament jams. Dust particles and other impurities that are big enough to pass through a 0.4mm nozzle might get stuck in a 0.25mm nozzle. That also means that you can forget about printing with metal or wood fills. So a quick summary, you get more resolution in the XY plane, better printing of text, jewelry, logos and really easy to remove supports, but you get longer print times, increased risk of filament jams and somewhat smaller range of filaments to print with. What if we go bigger than the standard 0.4mm nozzle? The 0.6mm nozzle is, at least in our opinion, even more interesting than the smaller ones. If your model doesn't have tiny details, it will be almost impossible to tell the difference between 0.4 and 0.6mm nozzle, but you'll shave off hours of print time. This flower pot? 3 hours saved, but that's at the same layer height for fair comparison. Remember, with 0.6mm nozzle, you can print much bigger layer heights and save even more time. Voronoi lamp? Almost 9 hours faster than with 0.4mm nozzle. And both of these little grim reapers took 3 hours using the same layer height. I'm sure you can guess which one was printed with a 0.6mm nozzle. 
I think you get the point. It prints fast, with relatively minor decrease in print quality. But wait, there's another benefit. In the impact resistance test, models printed with 0.6mm nozzle absorbed 25% more energy than those printed with 0.4mm nozzle. The test was done as an average from 10 samples, ignoring the lowest and highest value in each series, hence the 8 samples in this graph. Of course, small details, like these letters, look worse with 0.6mm nozzle. And supports are more difficult to remove, which is probably one of the biggest drawbacks. To sum it up, you get up to twice faster print times, similar print quality as with 0.4mm nozzle, more durable prints and a really low risk of a clock nozzle. But you get worse resolution of tiny details and harder to remove supports. But what if we go even bigger? One millimeter? Yep. Does your print take dozens of hours to finish? With one millimeter nozzle, you'll be able to finish it in two to three hours. Half a millimeter layers are even bigger than that. I think I know what you want to say. The prints must look awful, right? Although it's true that they do have a different aesthetic. With some models, it's not a bad thing actually. This pencil holder took over 11 hours to finish with a 0.4 mm nozzle. And this one was done in just 1 hour and 40 minutes. And there's a surprising advantage when printing with a 1 mm nozzle. It rounds all sharp corners automatically. So it's perfect for printing, for example, child toys. And you can print 5 of these dinosaurs in the time it would normally take to finish just one. Single perimeter prints with transparent filament also look interesting. They make light refract in a different way. Okay, so you get extremely fast printing, very sturdy prints, unusual look with tall layers, and basically zero risk of a clogged nozzle. But your prints will lack detail, the highly visible layers might not always be what you want, supports are really difficult to remove, and also filament seems to just disappear from the spool. So, are you convinced that you should give different diameter nozzles a chance? Even the original E3D nozzles are just about $7. This small investment can have a surprisingly large impact on how you print. And how do you replace the nozzle? We have a separate video about it that you can check out. If you enjoy these videos, we appreciate if you leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Happy printing!